Okay, so now we're setting up a water filtration system. Now this is nothing like the level of filtration that you'd need to remove bacteria and viruses, but it's absolutely ideal if you have to just remove coarse sediment, bits of twigs, leaves, or anything else that might be in the water supply that you plan on using. So what we need to do is first of all, make a nice tripod of hazel sticks like this, lash them together securely, and then support a t-shirt in between the tripod. And that will allow any large objects and large particles like these leaves, any insects, and other debris that could get caught up in the, in the fibers of the t-shirt to be filtered out. And then what we're left with is clear water. You'd still have to boil it to kill any bacteria and viruses, but at least it won't have any large debris in it. This is a Milbank bag. It's something that's been used by the army and on expeditions for many years. Now, it's basically a canvas bag, very dense weave, that needs to be soaked in water before it can be used. So what we do is we leave it in the water like this. You allow all the fibers to swell up, which then, through capillary action, draws the water through, leaves all the debris behind. So any sediment or any kind of debris like twigs, insects, gets left behind in the bag and we can be ready to go. Now, as you can see, the water's already starting to come through here. What I'd normally do as well is to just throw away the first water that comes through because that's rinsing off the outside of the bag. So just swill that around and throw it away. And now everything that's coming through should be clean. The same rule applies for any basic filtration device. You still need to boil or use iodine to purify the water and kill any bacteria or viruses or parasites. One of the big concerns in British waterways now, as in the rest of the world, is something called giardia, which is a, a small parasitic organism that can cause dysentery. Now this little beauty's a Swiss-made catadine pocket filter, probably one of the best water filtration devices money can buy. But they're not cheap. But this is the sort of filter that's used in disaster areas around the world to supply people who've been deprived of normal water, water systems. An absolutely excellent group filter for use on expeditions. And as you can see, it's very simple to operate. The only real downside to this system is that it, it does require somebody to be continually pumping it in order for it to work. So unlike the Millbank bag that you can fill up and leave, you do have to keep an eye on this one and continually pump it now a filter like this should filter about 50,000 litres of water before you need to replace the cartridge. A very useful piece of kit. Now this is another type of filter called an MWP and what it works on is a principle of filtration and chemical purification. So as well as filtering through a fine fibre membrane, it also uses iodine to actually sterilize the water and kill any viruses or bacteria that may get through the filtration. Now to use it, very much the same as the catadin. We start off pumping just slowly to begin with. Now the water that's coming through here, as well as having been filtered, it will also have a residual amount of iodine left in it. So if you are hypersensitive to iodine or if you're pregnant, it's probably best to avoid this one. But the advantages of having iodine are that it will continue to keep the water sterile after it's been pumped as well. This particular filter has actually been designed so that it can attach to the top of one of these NATO water bottles. So I'll just quickly do that. So by fitting it to the top, it sits in exactly the right place so that it can be used like this. So a filter like this is an absolute necessity if you're going anywhere where there's a danger that giardia or any viruses could be present in the water. Now here we have an absolute state-of-the-art piece of water purification system. It's made by MSR and it's called a Myox filter or mixed oxidant. Now it works by using rock salt crystals like this and a very small charge of electricity through the water solution that's created. This system will kill giardia and even cryptosporidium, which even iodine won't kill. So we take some of the salt crystals out of the bag. Put 
those into the salt chamber. Now what we need to do is very carefully just moisten the salt crystals just a touch. Doesn't need a lot. And then very tightly screw down the lid. Put the salt cap back on, screw it up tight, give it a shake a few times. This allows the salt to mix with the water and creates a solution. Now we unscrew this bit, pull that out of the way, <clears throat> this is where the magic starts. So by pressing this button just once, we allow an electrical charge to go through and you can see the, the bubbling as the solution is formed. Then what we need to do is pour the solution into our water bottle. Just a few drops is all it takes. Give the water a shake. Now we need to test it using these safety indicator strips, which are like the litmus paper you probably used in school. Now then, on the back of the safety indicator, we have a comparison chart, and as you can see, we need to add more mixed oxidant because it's not quite as purple as it should be, so it's still at the low level. So if we do it once again, that should raise it up to the level we need it to be at. Of course, if we try to drink water from a British stream nowadays, there's a very good chance we'll end up with an upset stomach, or even worse. So it's really important that if you're spending time in the outdoors and intend to drink water from streams, that you take something with you to purify the water. It could be something as simple as a Millbank bag and a billy can to boil the water, or a high-tech water filter costing hundreds of pounds. Cut myself a slice of time when the wind blows. The A to Z of Bushcraft is now out on DVD. Support the series www.azbushcraft.com